In this episode, we'll talk more about using live text templates in Adobe Premiere Pro and After Effects. Adorama TV presents Exploring Photography with Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of Exploring Photography right here on Adorama TV. Well, we are continuing our two-part uh, series on live text templates in Adobe After Effects and Premiere Pro. It's the feature that allows you to create really robust animations in After Effects with text, and then you can update that text straight in Adobe Premiere without ever having to do a round trip. It's pretty awesome. Well, there are some caveats, though, to using those live text templates, specifically things about how to uh, set them up for um, transitions and things like that, making sure you understand the difference between master clip and instances on the timeline. We're going to go through all of that stuff so that you know how to use these to the best of your advantage. But before we do that, I want to remind you that Adorama has some terrific contests. You can enter these contests, they're absolutely free, and you could win some great prizes. So click the link and enter the contest today. Well, without further ado, let's jump in and learn more about the features of live text templates in Adobe After Effects and Premiere Pro. Let's begin by talking about how to import our live text templates from After Effects into Premiere Pro. There are three ways that you can do this, at least three ways. The first is just to drag and drop your composition from After Effects into Premiere Pro. I showed you that last week. The second way is to do it the old fashioned way like we do everything. Just right click in our project and then say import, navigate to your template and then just import it. There's another way that I like to do. Uh, I like to, to import these. That's to use the media browser. The nice thing about the media browser is that you can double click and you can see a preview uh, of what your live text template will look like before you import it. So I can look at this lower, t uh, lower third EXIF data and I can see that this is going to give me um, some EXIF data here. If I look at my control, uh, effects control, I can see exactly what I can edit. I like that, but this is not in Premiere yet. I need to right click and then say import. Now once that's imported, what I can do is I can go to my project if I have something let's say an image, which is this was made for. So there's my Pelican. Then I can take my lower third here, go to my effects control, and then I can change my text so that it reflects uh, how I shot this image. Now I don't know what the actual shutter speed and all that kind of stuff is for this image. So I'm just making some stuff up. Once I get that uh, set, I can drag that over. And now I've got a nice lower third that shows all the EXIF data for this image. This EXIF data is not right, so <laughs> don't pay much attention to that. All right, so that's how you import your templates. Let's talk about some of the gotchas, though. The first is you need to understand the difference between a master clip and a clip on the timeline. They are not the same. Let me give you an example of this. So on our timeline here, we have our Pelican, we have Machu Picchu, and we have our blue-footed boobies. Now what I want to do is put a uh, lower third on each of these to label them. So what I'll do here is I will go to my lower thirds and I am going to get my lower third black master template and this allows me to change this uh, text down here. So what I'll do is I'm going to go into my effects control, change this from Mark Wallace to the Pelican. Okay, now I've got that. What I'll do is I'll set an out point about right there. Then I'm just going to drag this in. I'll put that about right there. Okay, so we have the pelican. Now what we want to do is add one for Machu Picchu. Well, if I go in here and uh, try to drag this same thing in, so here we go, we'll drag that in. It says the pelican. That's not right. If I click on the clip in the timeline, double click on that, and go to the effects control. These are our normal motion opacity, our time remapping, all the normal effects controls we'd have on any clip. And you'll see that there aren't any uh, controls to change the text. To get those, I need to click on the master clip, which is in the project panel. So I'll double click that. Then when I click the effects control, look at there, my title text. So I'll change that to Machu Picchu. And here's the gotcha. So now it says Machu Picchu. But because this is a master clip and we've used it twice, if I go back to where the pelican was, that also says Machu Picchu. 
So I need to have a different way to add different instances of the master clip on the timeline so we can have different names and different text for each of those. If I don't do that, when I update one, they'll all be updated and that's no good. The way to do this, and I will delete both of those instances from the timeline, is to right click on your master clip. So this is a lower third black master template. What I'm going to do is I am going to right click and then duplicate this. And then what I'll have is a copy of this. And you can see if I expand this, that this has created a copy. There it is, copy 01. I'm gonna rename that to uh, the Shy Pelican. I'm using that because I've already used Pelican before. So I've got that. Now what I can do is I can take the Shy Pelican, open that in my effects controls, and then type in the Shy Pelican. And then when I take that and throw it on my timeline, it says the Shy Pelican. Now what I can do is go down here and I can just duplicate the Shy Pelican, that's fine. I'll duplicate that and the, I'll rename that to Machu Picchu. And I'll name that Machu Picchu, uh, yeah, just that. Then I'll go in, double click in my project panel and make sure I've double clicked on Machu Picchu. In my effects control, I can just type in Machu Picchu. And then when I drag that to the timeline, I've created a brand new instance. It's not the same as the other one. And so when I go over here, you can see it says Machu Picchu. That's the Shy Pelican. If I want to change this, again, I can't double click here in the instance. I have to go over here to the master clip. And then I can change that from just Machu Picchu to Machu Picchu is great or whatever I want to call it. And you can see that. So you're going to be duplicating these and then dragging an instance over. The nice thing is you can create, let's say the Pelican, if I want to use that 20 times in my project, I can just keep adding that same uh, Pelican, an instance of that. And then if I say, oh darn it, I misspelled the Pelican, the Shy Pelican in 20 places, I only have to update it in one place and it'll, uh, it'll fix all of those instances. So it's really a nice feature. But to get different text, you need to have different instances of your master clip. So use duplicate to get that. Okay, the other thing that's a gotcha if you start working with these is uh, transitions. And I'm going to go to my main timeline here and show you something that is important. We have here two clips, Machu Picchu, and it transitions into the blue-footed booby. So what I want to do is zoom in on the timeline and show you this cross dissolve. Notice where the cross dissolve begins right here. When we start to scrub through, notice that you can see up here part of the, the bird, the blue-footed booby, over Machu Picchu. So what's happening is this clip on the right-hand side, the blue-footed booby, is giving some of its information over here on the left-hand side. So it's pulling in some over here. And as we transition in the center of this, we have an equal amount of the birds and Machu Picchu. So we have a little of both. And then as we continue, we still have a little bit of Machu Picchu, but more of the bird, and on we go until we get rid of that. So what that means is all the way over here, depending on how large your dissolve is or whatever effect you're using, you have to have some of this first uh, clip or the second clip to give to the first clip or else that won't work. And so when you're creating your text, uh, live text templates, this is important. Let's take a look. This lower third that I've created uh, it's called the lower third black. Let's double click that. When we scrub through here, you can see that this effect happens, or this uh, clip starts immediately. There's no space, okay? And so what will happen is if we try to use this with an effect, it's not going to work. Let me just show you exactly what I mean. So over here on the timeline, I'll take this little effect. I'm going to stretch this out. And then I'm going to take... A, a new instance of this, we'll duplicate this. And we're gonna rename this transition demo, just so you can see that. And then we'll add some text here. We'll call it, uh, I'm a demo. Okay, it's late here. So, all right, we're gonna throw this in. 
So we go from Machu Picchu to I'm a demo. Now, if we try to add a uh, dissolve effect, a cross dissolve effect, watch what happens. I'll go in here to video transitions, dissolve, cross dissolve, and I try to throw this on here and look, it won't allow me to do it. It won't allow me to dissolve between. The reason is this, uh, this clip right here, this lower third animation begins immediately. And so what I'd have to do is I'd have to be able to trim some of that. So I'll delete this cross dissolve. I'd have to be able to trim some of that, bring it back, and then I can put my cross dissolve across these. And so what has to happen is when you're designing your lower thirds and animations, you need to make sure you put enough room on the beginning of those so that you can use your different animations or your uh, different transitions. So I'm going to open After Effects and show you exactly how I've done that because when we go back to the beginning of this, you can see here we have the Shy Pelican and it transitions into Machu Picchu. The way that I did that, I created a separate live text template that has more space. So let's zip back over here to After Effects and we're going to open up our project really fast. And you can see I have lower third black and lower third black ADTV. If we open that ADTV, you'll notice that the Adorama TV logo does not animate in. And then we have a full second before the rest of the animation begins. And so that full second allows us to add a transition if we need it. And if we go back over here to Premiere, you can see that's exactly what's happening. As we step through this, notice the Shy Pelican, this is starting to dissolve out, but the Adorama TV remains constant because it isn't animated. And then we start our animation with the second of our live text templates. So when you're designing these, have those transitions in mind because a lot of times you'll want to add uh, some kind of transition between clips and lower thirds. It's really, really important that you can do that. All right, the other thing that we want to do, I want to, I want to show you really quickly, is uh, how you can quickly, quickly change your uh, master templates for different variations. So right now we've got white text and a black background, but what if we had a really dark scene? We'd want to switch that. So over in After Effects, it's really super easy to do that. So I could go into my lower third black, hit Edit, and then Duplicate. And I've got a new instance, and it takes everything that I had before. I rename that to, let's say, lower third white. And then I would just go in here to lower third white, and I would take these things like this right here. Instead of having that uh, fill being black, I would change that fill to be white. And then I would take my text, and my text, uh, instead of having that text being uh, black, I would make my text white. So I grab that, and and you get the idea. So here we go. Instead of that being black or white, we'd make that black, et cetera, et cetera. So I've just reversed that, and I can save that. Then when I come over to Premiere, I can bring that in, and you can see how easily it is to switch colors around. The nice thing is if I go back to my lower third, I can do my import like we showed you before. Right-click, import. This is on my desktop, and I can open this guy up master templates and now here is my lower third white click now i've got a lower third white template to choose from and it's the exact opposite of my black template and on you go and you can see how this is really easy to change very very quickly and add a lot of variation or well, there you have it all the different gotchas of using live text templates and how to work around those once you get a hang of it i don't think you'll ever go back to creating titles inside of premiere pro because it's just too easy to create live text templates. Well, thank you so much for joining me in this episode of Exploring Photography. Don't forget about the Adorama Learning Center. There are literally hundreds of free tutorials all about photography, post-production, gear reviews, you name it, it's there at the Learning Center. And don't forget that you can subscribe to Adorama TV. It's absolutely free, and that way you don't miss a single episode. Well, thanks again for joining me, and I will see you again next time.
great looking prints at low cost, be sure to visit our easy to use online printing service. Adorama Pix has professionals who treat your images with the utmost care that you can count on. For a quick turnaround on photos, cards, or albums, use adoramapix.com.